Ulysses is a novel by James Joyce, published in 1922. It is considered one of the most influential works of the 20th century and is famous for its complex narrative structure, experimental style, and use of stream-of-consciousness techniques. The novel follows the events of a single day in the life of Leopold Bloom, an advertising canvasser in Dublin, Ireland, on June 16, 1904, a day that has become known as Bloom's Day. The novel is divided into 18 chapters, each with its own unique structure and style. The first three chapters introduce the three main characters, Stephen Dedalus, a young intellectual and aspiring writer who is a student of history and philosophy, Leopold Bloom, a middle-aged Jewish advertising canvasser who is married to Molly Bloom, and Molly Bloom, Leopold's sensual and voluptuous wife. The first chapter, Telemachus, takes place in the morning and follows Stephen as he walks on the beach, interacts with his fellow students, and returns home to the Martello Tower where he is staying with Buck Mulligan, a flamboyant and irreverent medical student. The chapter is named after the son of Ulysses, who is searching for his father. The second chapter, Nestor, takes place in the morning and follows Stephen as he teaches a class of schoolboys at a nearby school. The chapter is named after the mythological figure Nestor, who is known for his wisdom and knowledge. The third chapter, Proteus, takes place in the late morning and follows Stephen as he wanders along the beach and reflects on his life, his relationships, and his artistic ambitions. The chapter is named after the shape-shifting sea god Proteus, who is known for his ability to change form. The fourth chapter, Calypso, takes place in the early afternoon and follows Leopold Bloom as he prepares breakfast for himself and his wife, Molly. The chapter is named after the seductive nymph Calypso, who holds Ulysses captive on her island. The fifth chapter, Lotus Eaters, takes place in the mid-afternoon and follows Leopold as he visits a funeral home and encounters various acquaintances and strangers, including a newspaper editor and a barmaid. The chapter is named after the mythical creatures who eat the intoxicating fruit of the lotus plant and forget their past. The sixth chapter, Hades, takes place in the late afternoon and follows Leopold as he attends a funeral procession for a man named Paddy Dignam. The chapter is named after the Greek god of the underworld, Hades, and explores themes of death and mortality. The seventh chapter, Aeolus, takes place in the evening and follows Leopold as he meets with several journalists at the office of the Freeman's Journal to place an advertisement for his employer. The chapter is named after the god of the winds, Aeolus, and satirizes the Dublin press. The eighth chapter, Lestragonians, takes place in the early evening and follows Leopold as he eats lunch at a restaurant and encounters various characters, including an old friend and a young woman. The chapter is named after the cannibalistic giants who attack Ulysses and his crew in Homer's Odyssey. The ninth chapter, Scylla and Charybdis, takes place in the evening and follows Stephen as he meets with several intellectuals at the National Library to discuss his theories on Shakespeare. The chapter is named after the sea monsters Scylla and Charybdis, who pose a deadly threat to Ulysses and his crew. The tenth chapter. The tenth chapter, Wandering Rocks, takes place in the early evening and follows various characters as they move through the streets of Dublin. The chapter is divided into nineteen sections, each of which focuses on a different character or group of characters. The narrative moves from person to person, providing brief glimpses into their thoughts, actions, and interactions. The eleventh chapter, Sirens, takes place in the late evening and follows Leopold and Stephen as they visit a bar and encounter various characters, including a group of singing barmaids. The chapter is named after the mythical creatures who lured sailors to their deaths with their enchanting songs. The twelfth chapter, Cyclops, takes place in the late evening and follows Leopold as he visits a pub and gets into a heated argument with a nationalist named The Citizen. The chapter is named after the one-eyed giant Cyclops from Homer's Odyssey and explores themes of nationalism, xenophobia, and violence. The thirteenth chapter, Nausicaa, takes place in the middle of the night and follows Leopold as he watches Jerdy McDowell, a young woman he has been admiring, from a distance. The chapter is named after the Princess Nausicaa, who helps Ulysses when he is shipwrecked on her island. The fourteenth chapter, Oxen of the Sun, 
takes place in the early morning and follows a group of medical students as they visit a hospital where a woman is giving birth. The chapter is structured to mimic the history of English literature, with each paragraph representing a different period of literary history and style. The fifteenth chapter, Circe, takes place in the early morning and follows Leopold and Stephen as they visit a brothel and encounter a surreal and hallucinatory series of events. The chapter is named after the sorceress Circe, who transforms Ulysses' crew into animals. The sixteenth chapter, Eumaeus, takes place in the early morning and follows Leopold as he meets with a sailor named Alf Bergen and encounters various characters, including a drunk and a prostitute. The chapter is named after the faithful swineherd Eumaeus, who helps Ulysses when he returns to Ithaca. The seventeenth chapter, Ithaca, takes place in the early morning and follows Leopold and Stephen as they return to Leopold's home and engage in a lengthy and detailed conversation. The chapter is structured as a series of questions and answers, and explores themes of identity, mortality, and the nature of consciousness. The eighteenth and final chapter, Penelope, takes place in the early morning and is narrated from the perspective of Molly Bloom. The chapter is structured as a long and flowing stream of consciousness monologue, in which Molly reflects on her life, her relationships, and her desires. The chapter is named after the faithful wife of Ulysses, and provides a powerful and poignant conclusion to the novel. Overall, Ulysses is a challenging but rewarding work of modernist literature that explores the complexities of human experience, identity, and consciousness through a variety of narrative techniques and perspectives.